That's right. It's that time of year. It's Christmas time. And that means that the fat man is coming to town. I have been actually really looking forward to talking about this movie. Because ever since I saw it, it has become one of my favorite films. Not only just for Christmas, but in general, really. See, I went and saw Fat Man in theaters when it came out. It was like Thanksgiving night, I'm pretty sure. Like, I think it was a midnight showing that they did. Um, like, they did three days or something. Uh, it was a very limited release, but it really sucks because it's a great film. I really, really like this film. And so if you, if you have not seen Fat Man, please go buy it on Amazon. Like, you can get it on Amazon Prime or you could get a physical copy um, off of Amazon in general. But watch it. Like, please, you know, I, I will be going into spoilers later, but honestly, even if you stick through my review, I really want you to go watch the film. Because it is so much better than I could ever do credit for talking about it in a review. So, without any further ado, uh, let's talk about the man himself. The Fat Man. Santa Claus. Christopher Kringle. Played by Mel Gibson in this film. And Mel Gibson, you know, love him or hate him, he's a really good actor. And... Santa is like a fully fleshed out character in this film. He's not just the mythological creature, right? He's not like a Loch Ness monster. He's a person. And, you know, he has thoughts and feelings. And he gets depressed when he hears that uh, people are not doing great. Or that the youth are being more and more inclined to not follow uh, the righteous path, I suppose. Uh, the film, as much as it's a Christmas movie, it's not very uh, religious in that aspect. It's more about just being a good person rather than um, following the Christian morals or whatever. And uh, I really like that. I like that it appeals to, you know, everyone, not just pure Christians. Um, and, you know, and you can tell from Mel Gibson's performance and from the writing of the film that Santa has been at this for a long time. And it has really started to wear him down. And that lately, things have been getting worse in his eyes, where he's been producing less toys for children because less and less children end up making the nice list. You know, we see that really getting to him. And unfortunately for him, this means that he is not going to be subsidized by the government, or at least not for what he needs. Which is a really interesting piece of world building throw in here that the government pays for Santa because Santa is a huge economic stimulus. And it's really neat and I just, I really like that even though this is a very, very silly movie, things like this are being taken seriously. It really helps invest you into the story. And so Santa has to go into a one-time, two-month arrangement with the U.S. military to build military equipment for drones. And so the elves, they have to have their bells cut off and... Security around Santa's workshop is drastically increased, and so Santa is starting to look up, and it's really cool to see how he has been built up through the film, where we start off seeing him uh, Christmas Eve to 
Christmas or a little before um, Christmas night and you know he goes through this ordeal with the military and he tries to find other people um, that he can provide service for that can pay him but every other manufacturer in the world is now starting to be able to produce whatever they need to produce at a cheaper cost than his workshop and that also bums him out we also see that he recognizes people which is a really fun thing that they kind of play around with um where almost every single person he runs into he immediately recognizes who they are and what their life experience has been and um, it's really cool to see and it comes back into the story uh, later and we see that not only is he depressed that you know more and more children are ending up on the naughty list but that Christmas is hard for Santa that yeah he goes out and he does this but it's a tough job to do because he takes a few shots from a deer rifle and you know and he says that it'll heal in the usual way which lets us know that Santa has a moderate healing factor uh, which is kind of neat it helps establish why he's lived so long um, the other line that we get to establish why he lives so long is and Chris, he does the same? No. It's a giving that keeps him young. And it makes sense that if he, if we take that to be literally true, then we know that he's giving out less presents, and so therefore he's getting older. He's becoming weaker. And so it's not just about the money. He needs to find a way to appeal to more people he needs to find a way to inspire children to stay on the nice list and uh, that will come back later so santa is working with the military and through a really neat scene and lots of just little dialogue exchanges between um, Santa and his wife Ruth um, he starts to feel a lot more chipper and a lot more enthused about uh, moving forward and uh, after some uh, post Christmas coitus Santa gets a uh, alarming call there's shots everywhere everything's on fire and so he runs outside to see the workshop explode. And so, who's this? I always thought you forgot about me. Oh, well. Jonathan Miller, you twisted child. In order to explain how he got here, we're gonna need to go back to the beginning of the film. No earlier than that. Meet Billy Winnin, or Wyman? It's pronounced a little differently uh, between each character, um, but I'm pretty sure it's meant to be a play on winner. Uh, Billy, he loves to win the science fair. He is a spoiled rich kid who is, for the most part, neglected by his father. Um, his mother is out of the picture. Um, we don't get a mention of her, so more than likely she's dead but we do know that his father is somewhat neglective 
and Billy lives with his grandmother, and uh, Billy likes to win the science fair. So this year, Billy didn't win the science fair. Instead, it went to another classmate of his. And so Billy does what all normal kids do in that situation. They call up their father's hitman and uh, interrogate their classmate until they get them to forfeit the competition so that he can win. Now obviously, this is something that won't get you on the nice list. And so when Billy runs down Christmas morning and opens his gift from Santa, it's a lump of coal. To which he responds, And now we get into the skinny man, or Jonathan Miller. And we find out that not only is he sort of a hitman, but he collects and pays quite a pretty penny for authentic made in Santa's workshop uh, toys and trinkets. And uh, that that's just something he does. However, he's also very efficient at his job. And so Billy knows about this hobby of this hitman. And so he wants the hitman to kill Santa. What do you think your childhood dream is worth? And now the skinny man agrees. And uh, from there, the absolute brilliance of this film comes through, where it is so funny, even though there really aren't, it's hard because there's not jokes in the sense of, well, someone says something really funny. There's a few as we follow Jonathan Miller trying to hunt down Santa. But there's not that many. Most of the comedy comes from the fact that we're watching a serious hitman very seriously with a like straight face, deadpan uh, tone, trying to hunt down Santa Claus. And uh, it's really funny where like he tries to Let's see if there's any listings for Christopher Kringle um, in one of the best jokes of the film. Well, is there a city up there? An island? Anything? A chunk of ice floating in the fucking ocean? I can't say on here to talk like this. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cuss. Please don't hang up. I want to help you if you can be more. Okay, uh, what about the city of, of Eureka on Ellesmere Island? Who can have it? Great, great. Do you have a listing for Christopher Kringle? Hello? Hello? Then he goes and tries to hunt down where they send the letters to Santa. And that takes him to North Slope, Alaska. And from there he's able to stock out and wait for Chris to show up. And then he follows him all the way back to Santa's workshop where he sneakily takes care of the military commander's men and then that gets us to the point where he finally meets the fat man! and then they have a fight which is pretty good it's pretty straightforward but it's a lot of just shooting and um, there's a little bit of a trench sequence um, where they have some creative use of sound uh, as well as uh, like lighting because Santa is able to see Jonathan's shadow and get the jump on him from there. Jonathan pulls out uh, his leg knife, uh, his knee knife. I'm not sure if there's a technical term for that weapon, but he's able to use it to stab Santa in the back. And he then pulls out his gun and shoots 
Santa dead in the head. Um, this isn't where anyone would expect this Christmas film to end, right? But I'm really glad that it went there. Because it's really cool that, you know, the film has balls, right? He runs into the house, Jonathan does, after Ruth. And Ruth gets the jump on Jonathan and kills him. And then we get the reveal that Santa, while being very, very injured from this, he's got that healing factor. And so he's not going to die so easily. And so they get him back up and they start nursing him to health. But we've got a part of the story that still isn't resolved. Whatever happened to Billy? Well, we see Billy in his grandmother's house. And his grandmother has found out that a lot of money is missing from her bank account. Because someone, and she doesn't know who, but it has in fact been Billy, has been forging her checks so that he can pay the hitman and presumably for other things. Now, Billy goes into his room and comes up with a solution to his grandmother by mixing in fentanyl with her nightly milk when he gets a knock on the door. He's upset with the maid because he didn't want to be disturbed and she simply steps to the side. No words exchanged because none need to be. Ruth walks in, says who she is, and then says, this is Chris. And he walks in with his eye covered and sits down and he tells Billy that this is partly his fault that he just hasn't been himself lately however he's decided to be proactive and I really like the idea that the solution to Santa's whole problem of not sending out enough gifts and uh, you know growing older because of that and uh, being weaker because of that and not having the money to support himself because of that that all of that is solved by the idea that Santa will now go out into the world and uh, give children on the naughty list a push to either get better or you know who knows what might happen but uh overall i really really like this film it's filled with so many neat little details and character exchanges um like the the military colonel he could have been an absolutely like non-character just military colonel guy but they add in little details into his dialogue that are really funny where he's trying to be very PC about the whole elves situation. It's a very impressive group of little workers you've got here. Where he really doesn't want to call them elves, you know, but in the end he ends up giving his life to save them. And it's like, man... This is, like, this works really well. And I'm really glad this film exists. Uh, I don't really want a sequel, though. If you gave it to the Nelms Brothers, I think that's their name. Uh, the directors of this one. Uh, I'm sure they could do well with it. I just, I don't know that it's necessary. And... I do fear that this film may have inspired other films that will take all of the wrong lessons from this film. Uh, I'm looking at you, Violent Night. Let's just let's hope that one's good. Uh, but I don't know. It seems to be revolving a lot around the child, whereas the child is like he's a good actor in this. Don't get me wrong, but. He's also not the main focus, and that's really good, but I don't know. I haven't seen Violent Night. Uh, 
I could be completely wrong on it. It just, it looks a little cringe to me. Um, but we'll find out, I guess. But so yeah, there, there's really, there's so much more to say. And yet, this is all I really want to say for this review. Because I want people to go out and see this film. It's great. And so, you know, this is absolutely for me, this has become a holiday tradition. I watch this film every year, um, sometimes with alcohol, sometimes without. It's a great film, and I just, I can't recommend it enough. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas.